Okay, so let's find the domain and range of the secant function. To do that, I've already kind of made all these domain and range functions that are kind of all the same, so I'm gonna kind of go through this a little bit quicker than the other ones. Um, first thing we need to do is graph the domain to help us graph the, um, gra I'm sorry, graph the cosine function to help us graph the secant. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay? Domain function starts up there, goes down, crosses up there, back up, ding, ding, ding. All right, so we'll just, and there, to that one. All right, so we're just gonna get a little bit to thing. We noticed that at the, to graph the secant function from the cosine, every single intercept is not evaluated for our secant function. So therefore, it's gonna have a vertical asymptote, and that's gonna become very important when we're talking about finding the domain. For each one of these values, we know it has a max or min at pi, so therefore an asymptote at, neg at pi halves, at negative pi halves, and then at um, three pi over two, and at negative three pi over two. Okay, so then our graph approaches our two asymptotes, or not our two asymptotes, but all of our asymptotes, as the graph continues infin infinitely to the positive and negative direction. Okay, so now I can just erase it and we can say, all right, here's a, a quick little just look at um, our secant function. We notice that this function is going to repeat in the positive and in the negative direction. So how, what is going to be our domain? Now remember the domain is going to be all of the x values that are part of your function that we can evaluate our function for. So rather than looking, trying to, rather than trying to think of all the numbers, let's look at all the numbers that we can't evaluate our function for. And the only values that we cannot evaluate our function for in the secant function is where we have vertical asymptotes. So we notice that each vertical asymptote is created because we can't evaluate our secant function at those points. So we notice that we have a vertical asymptote at pi halves at three pi halves, at negative pi halves, and at negative three pi halves. So besides that, all other x values can be evaluated in our function. So we say our domain is going to be all real numbers except x cannot equal pi halves, but that's not it, right? It's gonna keep on going pi halves and three pi halves and then keep on going on and on in the positive and in the negative direction. So how do we write all of those representation? Well, we notice that the distance between each asymptote is pi. So I can just write pi n, where n is going to be the number of multiples that you're gonna keep on adding. n can be any real number, positive one, positive two, negative one, negative two. Um, and that will show it, that will represent all asymptotes. When looking at the range, now we're gonna be looking at the y values, all right? So we know that the x values um, cannot be evaluated at our vertical asymptotes, but we don't have any horizontal asymptotes. So we're looking at this, we're saying, all right, well, the range looks pretty good. So what values are not a part of the range? Well, let's start at negative infinity. These, these arrows go down to negative infinity. So we know our graph is gonna go from negative infinity, but then how far up does it go? How many y values do we have? Goes all the way up and then it bends at our, at our vertex or our, um, our maximum vertex here, which is gonna be at negative one. So our range goes from negative infinity all the way up to negative one, but then starts back up again at one up to infinity. So therefore you can say that our range is from negative infinity to negative one, then there's nothing in our graph between negative one and one, and then it starts back up at one to infinity. So there it goes, ladies and gentlemen, that's your domain and range of the secant function. Thanks.